What is at stake is more than one small country. It is a big idea, a new world order, where diverse nations are drawn together in common cause to achieve the universal aspirations of mankind. Peace and security, freedom and the rule of law. How would you assess this evening? This was a stirring address, in my view. Shorter than his father's speech when he announced the New World Order. Shorter than his father's speech when he announced the New World Order. Let's talk time and time again about the New World Order. And this is the best chance to begin to establish the New World Order. Warn his people about the Antichrist about Dajjal, the false messiah. And the prophet Noah warned his people. But I, I say to you something that none have said before me. The Antichrist sees with one eye his left eye he's blind in the right eye it looks like a bulging grip but your Lord is not one eye. The walls between races and tribes, natives and immigrants, Christians and Muslims and Jews cannot stand. These now are the walls we must tear down. He will call to a false religion and bring something which resembles paradise and hell. But that which resembles paradise will in fact be hell and that which resembles hell will in fact be paradise. He is the Dajjal, meaning imposter. The prophet further foretold that this liar would start to conquer the world, country by country, fortress by fortress, region by region, town by town. The one eye is one of the ways to recognize the Dajjal. The one eye is the symbol of the Freemasons. It is part of their beliefs and is taken from ancient Egyptian mythology.
everybody And who me? Busy the thugs to call me Kamikaze I won't even speak about Illuminati Welcome to Babylon, man, I need this beat to copy Tell me how to do it, do it, make it, do it to the heavenly Won't be no hell with me, just paradise So what you gon' do, what you gon' do, do, do When the new world order come for you can do what you can do is recognize the truth Realize these signs do pertain to you too You see, global corporations not only fund and develop large technological and military projects here and abroad, they also own the consumer industry and production, as well as all of the important media. By owning the vast majority of what we hear and see on a daily basis, we have been manipulated on a mass scale as to regards to what we believe and desire, both socially and politically. Edward Bernays, the nephew of world-famous psychoanalyst Sigmund Freud, would study group dynamics and become the father of public relations. He authored the book Propaganda in 1928. In it, he described how to intelligently and consciously manipulate the habits and opinions of the masses within a democratic society. He went on to state that those who harness this unseen mechanism of society constitute an invisible government and are the true ruling power. It is they who pull the wires which control the public mind, who harness old social forces and contrive new ways to bind and guide the world. Although costs at the pump are ready to break the dreaded $20 ceiling. Now we got confidence! Let's have confidence! Across the nation, civil unrest has intensified with the demise of the U.S. dollar. This is not a retreat. Nor is it a retreat. This is not a retreat. Nor are we abandoning our Asian allies. This is not a retreat. Nor are we abandoning our Asian allies. Under threat of annihilation by the greater Korean Republic, Japan has surrendered. The president ordered a freeze on bank withdrawals. We don't know what we forget our next meal from. Korea's annexation continues to spread. Today, the Greater Korean Republic launched their latest communication satellite, claiming it will bring a message of peace to the entire world.
When you go shopping, watch TV, read a magazine, or walk through the city, how well do you pay attention to the assault of logos that invade your space? Have you noticed the same symbols that show up in thousands of logos? Or have you fallen into a media-induced slumber, accustomed to the assault? Humanity has been conditioned by symbolism, and today we are bombarded by logos. The average American is exposed to 600 commercial messages each day. Some symbols and messages we recognize, and some we don't. And what we don't understand can be used against us. And don't think that it stops there. Religious organizations, governments, astrologists, secret societies, nonprofits, and health organizations clearly understand the effectiveness of symbolism to communicate a message. Political campaigns are using subliminals in their ad campaigns. The entertainment and gaming industries know that symbols have emotional power and they play on it. The question is, do you know? <laughs> 